everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Fortress of a podcast about movies, TV shows, video games, and lots of pop culture nerd things. My name is Oscar. I'll be one of your hosts today. And with me, per usual, we got Brian, also known as New Reliable, and Mr. Negative on a Dragon Ball Z arc, and Devin, Mr. Nowhere. Woo-woo. Hello, fellas. How, how we all doing today, today? Doing good. My cat was just going crazy. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> went on psychopath time. Something in the water. <laughs> something in the water. I don't know what's going on over there. Or maybe something in the air with all the wildfires. So. Oh, yeah. Could be that too. Lordy Lord. Yeah, for real, right? Plastic for some reason. <laughs> but I do like, let's. Uh, well, it's, it's a weekly weather report. I do like how like the first time that happened, everyone kind of freaked out. And then we're like, wear masks outside. And then it happened like a week later and everyone's like, ah, it's a Tuesday. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Shit don't matter. Whatever. The air quality, so t- 200, terrible, will kill you. Uh, you know, fuck it. Climate change. So nuts. <laughs> like if zombies actually happen, we would care for one day and then be like, ah, fuck it. Yep. Whatever. Let them eat us. The alien invasion? <laughs> oh, okay. Next day. Well, that's just part of our everyday now, so. <laughs> Honestly, I understand why people in the Marvel Universe are so nonchalant about this shit. Because <laughs> we uh, <laughs> We'd have exactly yeah. one freak out before we don't care anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, listeners, we got a big, fun show for you today. Uh, but first, guys, should we just hop into our first segment of the week? Oh, yeah. They do it. News talk. First piece of news for the week. Uh... My goodness, I don't think anyone saw this coming. Apparently, this is by reported by THR, Jennifer Gardner is going to be back as Elektra in Deadpool 3. Whoa. Which is such a wild move. Like, whoa, <laughs> why? Because I love it because it's hilarious, but what the hell? It came out 20 years ago. Yeah. She's like in her 50s now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so what, what? What's? I mean, Ben Affleck was Batman, so yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I'm thinking a cam- it's got to be a cameo situation. Like it's got to be just for like a joke, like one joke. I kind of hope she's in it for like 40 minutes, <laughs> <laughs> not 40 Man. minutes. But if like it makes me wonder, is like, is this movie just gonna be Cameo City then? Like why? Why just like? There's got to be if, unless if she is a cameo, there's got to be more than that. Like why True. really? Why is why this one report coming out? You know, what else could they be hiding unless she is a major part of this movie? Right. right, right <laughs> that would right. be wild. But I mean, I don't know. I guess, you know, Electra is just a character that nobody's really mentioned. Like nobody's even talked about recasting her or anything. So maybe they're just like, oh, we can burn this. And just bring well, I mean, she's in the Daredevil show, the, ne- the oh. Netflix one. So which is why it's like, what universe is Deadpool in? <laughs> unless this is, like, is, De- is Deadpool in the MCU at this point? No, is he not? No way. What's going to happen? I don't know, but I, it's so it's gonna be funny. <laughs> Didn't that movie bomb Electra when they made yeah, yeah, that movie? Solo movie? It's really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that movie was real bad. That movie's so <laughs> fucking boring. It's up there with uh, like Halle Berry's Catwoman, where it's just like, what? What were we thinking? Yeah, Dude, Oh my gosh, I was thinking of like scenes from Electra, and I realized they were actually just scenes from Daredevil with Electra <laughs> in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's basically what I have to say about that movie. But yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. forgettable. Very weird. Very weird movie. But hey, this sounds fun. Deadpool 3 might end up being really... I mean, I don't think we had, any of us thought it was going to be bad. I think it was, we all thought mm-hmm. it was going to be Deadpool some more. So, And with Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine, that's like pretty awesome. They just got to like resist the urge to go MCU. Just let it be what it was with the first two, and, that, and we're going to be good. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think they've said that they're, it's still rated R, and they're still going to keep all the Deadpoolness to it. So it should be. We will see. Next piece of news. This is also coming from the last week we talked about the Xbox fucking trial that was ongoing and blah, 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 blah. Well, one piece of uh, uh, a doc- court document uh, was shown that uh, Microsoft believes that PlayStation and Sony will be releasing a PS5 Slim later this year, which I think is utterly ridiculous. For 400 <laughs> smackaroons, baby. Yep. They saw all those eight of those other PlayStations that were really hard to get. And then they were like, let's just go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we can make it double if we make it a little bit smaller. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like I know that the PS5 has been out or will be out this this like Christmas for three years. It does not feel like that at all. I mean, yeah, because their roster of games is still pretty small. I mean, people are going to argue that. But like, there's so many fucking games. There's really not. There's really not for three years worth of a system. By 2017, PlayStation 4 had so many video games out. Right. Which was what? I think that was three years into the life cycle of PlayStation 4. 2013, 2014. Uh, so that's just crazy to me that I can think of like maybe eight games that I'd be like, I would definitely buy for PlayStation 5 if I ever got one. Mm-hmm. And that's being oh, yeah. generous. You know what I mean? I can't see this feeling like the mid life cycle to the point where we might get a PS5 Pro 
in a year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could see them doing it 2024. I still feel like that'd be very soon. Again, I think the pandemic really fucked yes. <laughs> fucked our time, the, the timeline in our brains. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I also saw in this article they were talking about uh, the portable PlayStation 5 as well, potentially being released this year, which, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. That'd be wild. That would be, that'd I mean, be crazy. I could see them maybe ramping up like, or like like showing it off right. and like showing all the, the specs on it and everything this year, but as far as a release, I don't know. Unless don't know. unless they just got like all the tech stuff leaked to them from the Steam Deck. I just don't see them creating it that quickly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting shit, though. Interesting shit. And again, I love how this is all coming from a dumb trial about a fucking Call of Duty game. <laughs> <laughs> about a Call of Duty publisher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so dumb. Rough. What's so funny is I is still knowing whether or not this is even going to happen. We still don't even know if they'll actually end up acquiring Activision Blizzard. And the Still funny thing know. about that is then what happens to Activision Blizzard? <laughs> if they're not but they're really yeah. they're really banking on this. So they really need it. I don't know what'll happen if this ends up not going through, which God, they're trying their ass off to make sure it doesn't. I hope Sony goes to try to buy them right after. <laughs> what if they don't? What if they're like, actually, we don't actually want you? After they made all that fuss over Call of Duty and how much money they would lose if they didn't have it, and they're like, nah, <laughs> gross, actually. We don't want you guys. The Nintendo can buy you. <laughs> no one wants it. Yeah. It's just tainted. <laughs> I mean, it already is kind of tainted yeah, anyways, tainted. but yeah. And that's why I'm afraid of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we get a PS5 Slim, PS5 Pro, whatever they're going to call it this year. Who knows? That's it. Short news week this week, listeners. Uh, but that's because we got a pretty fun big main topic that might consume a lot of time, but we'll see. Ooh. So let's head into this, shall we, guys? Let's do let's it. Let's do it. But once again, we're trapped in another fortress. This is a fortress. Uh, I don't even know how to describe <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a fortress that's... Uh, Full of many different genres and 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 movie things. There's, there's some his history behind it. There's some some toys behind we, it because we we're in the fortress of brunch girlies and atomic bombs, baby. Yes, <laughs> Oppenheimer, Barbie meme. Okay, yeah, right. So Barbieheimer. Let me yeah. explain this to other people that might not be as connected and cool as I am to the internet yes, scene. Yes, please, okay. chronically online, as as they would say. The meme <laughs> circulating both. Oppenheimer and Barbie released the same day and they could not be more opposite movies, both in the way they've marketed <laughs> these movies and also just the way they are and what the subject matter is about. So in meme culture, as we have done, you know, we've done great things like it's Morbin time. We've done great things like wearing suits, <laughs> wearing suits to I think the Minions movie. I think that was one of the, the Minions memes. movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like getting really dressed up to go see that. Okay. I love this kind of stuff. So next for this, the, the, the joke, the meme, the idea is you go to see Oppenheimer in the morning as early as you can. Then you go out, go to brunch, get a little toasty, and then you go see Barbie as like a palate cleanser. Bro, Oppenheimer's like a three-hour movie. I, I don't know if you make it brunch. First of all, brunch. Even if you see that movie at 9 a.m., you still ain't making brunch. <laughs> you still yeah, maybe yeah. Brunch, dinner. brunch goes to like three. No, brunch okay. goes to like three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Either way, you got to get a little toasty before you go into Barbie, okay? So yeah. for this week... And possibly not in Brian's case, but for Oscar and I, <laughs> we're going to pitch one historical event movie and then another one based on a toy franchise that has not been made into a movie yet or whatever you want to do. But that's what I'm going to pitch. The same, my, my, <laughs> my Oppenheimer Barbie moment is going to be revealed to you guys. And yes, I personally yes. made my own Barbieheimer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Brian took it another spin, but we love it and we're very excited for it either way. <laughs> Just combine the movies into one. <laughs> I, I sure did. Yes. That, that's what happened. Beautiful explanation, Devin. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing right now, listeners. Uh, Devin, since this was your beautiful, beautiful manifestation, and because me and Brian both know that you definitely put more work into the histor historical <laughs> accuracy part of this, of your movie, you go first. Let's, let's, let's see what, what is your weekend look like? with your Oppenheimer and Barbie <laughs> okay. team up. Well, here's, give, here's give us your whole pitch. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to hear the whole day that you got going on. Here's my pitch for you guys, okay? I don't know how this movie has... I don't know how this has not been made into a movie yet, considering all the dumb stories they tell about World War II. This is one that's actually worth telling, okay? Oh, you made a World War II movie? God so, damn. It's only the <laughs> so 80th this year. Dope. Awesome. <laughs> another one. Another one. <laughs> Yes, but there's many bad war movies out there. Okay, but this is one where you could really do a lot with it. You could make it, I'm kind of thinking like Tarantino would direct this or maybe even like oh. Wes, Wes Anderson, maybe. Oh, it's going to be weird. Like it, because it was a weird thing that happened. <laughs> like <laughs> very strange event. Okay, so this is a movie about the Battle of Castle 
Ike Terror. It happened five days after Hitler killed himself, two days before uh, Germany's unconditional surrender in World War II. So basically the war is like really ramping down, okay? Like it's basically over all of the territories occupied by allied forces, right? But there's this one castle in like the hills and mountains of Austria called Castle Eiter, which was a prison used by the SS. So there's a difference here, which I feel like I should explain. The (laughs) SS is like the fanatic. They were like the special forces. They were like really, really fanatically Nazi, okay? The Wehrmacht was like the German, the regular German army, just kind of like people that were not as fanatic. Okay, that's an important distinction for this story. So the SS had this prison for French prisoners, for VIP French prisoners, okay? In this prison, and it was really a castle. It's like one of those kind of like chateau kind of castles where they just kind of keep you, you can't leave, but it's like, you know, you're kind of like living, like you're you're not living in squalor, you know? But you can't leave. So they had a former prime minister there they had two commander in chiefs of the army. They had Charles de Gaulle's sister, which I was like, that's a random one. They had a French resistance leader. They had trade union leader. They had these kind of VIPs, but they also had a French tennis player named Jean oh, Boratra. <laughs> so at some point, they decided he was important enough to keep in prison. At, uh, also, I don't, oh, I don't no. understand that. <laughs> anyway, so here's what happened. Okay, set the scene. The Americans are closing in. Okay, the SS at this point is kind of roaming the countryside. They're killing people. They're they're killing people if you if you hold a white flag up. They're killing people if you display an Austrian flag. If they think you maybe were a deserter from the army, they'll execute men on sight. They're real doing real bad stuff. Okay, but the whole German army is kind of falling apart, right? So what happens is the French prisoners realize this could go real bad real quick. So we got to sneak a guy out. We got to get the word out. We got to get the help some help from the Americans. So they send two guys out to get help. Uh, one of them gets the Americans, but they get delayed. And the other guy gets to the Austrian resistance, who is working with a German regular army commander named Joseph Gangel. Okay? So this guy radios the Americans. He's been, like, protecting this town of Austrians from, like, the SS, right? Who used to be on the, he used to be on the same side with these guys, like, two weeks ago. Okay. Gangel's like, okay, I'll go help. Let's radio the Americans, get some help. So... Gangle approaches a recon unit, with, which had some, some American tanks, like a, a small recon unit, okay? So he, the Americans say, okay, sure, we'll go help this castle, because the French are just worried that the SS is going to attack them at any minute. So they go up, they get there, there's, there's a flimsy bridge, they can't really get all the tanks across, so they can only get one tank there, okay? There's one tank, there's 14 Americans, there's Gangle, <laughs> and he only has 11 German guys. He has 11 former German soldiers with him. They get attacked by 100 to 150 SS Jesus. troops. My God. At night. Okay. So obviously, the Americans and the, you know, the German guy, they're like, hey, like, you know, you French VIPs, you guys should probably like hide out, get somewhere safe. And, the, and they're like, no, we're going to fight with you too. So the whole night, they're kind of like, they give the tennis player a gun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> May, I'm hoping Charles de Gaulle's sister as well. I'm not sure, but you know, I didn't, it doesn't say. Yo. So anyway, they, they all throughout the night, the Germans are kind of like, you know, the, the, the SS is kind of like probing, run, you know, trying to get in there. Then they attack in the morning. They immediately blow up the American tank, the one tank that they had. Okay. So things, <laughs> no, things no. are dire. Okay. Well, what happens is they, they had radioed for assistance from another American unit and they were kind of on the way. But the, before they could get all the information out, the, radio, the communications have been cut off. So the tennis guy, Baratra, <laughs> he like volunteered to like run through the SS to like get to the oh Americans. Oh my God. And like give them the, the details they needed to like, you know, have, make this a successful rescue mission. And he made it. And then he gets there. What? And he turns around and he's like, give me an American uniform and let's go get, like, let's, let's go help my people. So they, they, he <laughs> immediately, turns around with the Americans and they go rescue uh, the French VIPs. They, they resoundly beat the SS pretty immediately because, oh, you know, th- this is the American army at the end of World War II. Only four people were wounded and only one person killed. And you know who was the one person that was killed? Was the German Chancellor. commander who used to be in the German army, but he was killed helping one of the French VIP prisoners, one of the, pr- the former prime minister out of harm's way. And he was shot and killed. The wow. only casualty on the Allied side in this battle. That's crazy. So, I just, 
It's a really cool battle. Honestly, you could make a spinoff of just that tennis player's life up to that <laughs> I point. Because what like, the fuck is like that? Like, it starts off at this dude as a child just being like a tennis prodigy. And it ends with him running across the fields in World War Right, II. it's like, what is going on here? And like... <laughs> That's so and like, nuts. There was a journalist, there was a Canadian journalist with the American Relief Force who like recognized the French guy, I guess, because of French connection, whatever. And he would end up becoming like a, a premier or something of Canada. So like, it was crazy, like the connections here. Wow. But yeah, I just thought it was a very cool story. French, French VIPs slash diplomats fighting with American soldiers, fighting beside German soldiers, all on the same side in a World War II battle before it was officially over against actual Nazis. So, and they won. And they That's won. That's so nuts. That's so and they crazy. won. One of the craziest things I've ever like read about. What a weird but see, so, battle. Okay, so for the movie, <laughs> I think you could do it I don't think you do American bravado kind of thing. I think that's very tired. I think you do it in like kind of a goofy Tarantino uh. way where like the French, the French VIPs mm. are kind of dicks. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like what the fuck? You guys showed up with 14 people. Like that's not nearly enough. And like, right. We're right. Fucked. So maybe there's this kind of goofy things. And like, there was goofy things happening around this whole battle. Like there were people riding bikes, like to get words to each other. And like, there was like a bridge that, you know, they couldn't get tanks across. Like it's like goofy enough to where right. I think you could make it kind of like a comedy. And it would work. Oh, you want a cocaine goodness. beard is what you're saying. You want to turn like a real life of <laughs> into, into a, a B movie. Almost. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> That's honestly incredible. I want like a one shot of this French tennis player running across like a doing like a 40 yard dash. <laughs> but it's just a one shot of him <laughs> just running. He, said he went through like multiple SS positions to get to them. So he like he like volunteered like vault over the walls and like, you know, get out there. But uh, there were a lot of people like that. in Good Lord. There were a lot of people like that in World War Two. World War Two was a, a weird time. There were a lot of weird characters in World War Two. <laughs> they really didn't give a <laughs> shit about their lives. I'll tell you about Mad Jack someday. That guy was a crazy dude. Mad Jack. Yeah. That sounds like a Mortal Kombat right. character. <laughs> dude, he he would go into missions with a broadsword. And he has the only confirmed <laughs> oh bow and arrow kill in World War II. The dude was just wild and Jesus. Yeah, he was what a wild the guy. Fuck? That's a dude who just doesn't give a he shit. He was doing about side quests nothing. during the war. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going for achievements. Right? Yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> He's trying, honestly, to, honestly. He's trying to get his gamer score up. <laughs> yeah, Battle of Castle Lights needs That's to be nuts. a movie. Is that what the movie's going to be called? Um, yeah. Or is it going to be called The Weirdest Battle in World yeah, War II? Yeah, honestly, some, yeah, The Strangest <laughs> Battle of World War II. That would be a better name, I guess, for it. But something to let people know, like, this is not going to be your typical war movie because it should not be. It was right. a very weird thing. That's pretty good. I really like That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's fun. It's like, pitch it. Pitch it to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, yes, if anyone listening steals these ideas, we will sue. Uh, <laughs> we will be suing <laughs> expeditiously. Okay, we sure. have a great <laughs> pitch my, my toy franchise one, too. Yeah. You got to pitch the whole thing. Let's go. What's the weekend look like? So after you see this movie, what's the, ne- well, what's the next one? Well, mine's kind of the opposite of the Barbie Oppenheimer thing. Like, Oh, so the, so you, the fun one's okay. going to be the the, the, <laughs> the war movie War too. You're about to traumatize a toy franchise. I was going to say, then your oh Lego boy. toy franchise is going to be ridiculous for yes, some reason. The, oh, no. Oh, no. The, the oh, dark, no. Oh, no. It's going to be a dark, dark survival epic. What did you do to Furby? <laughs> what did you do? No. I wish. No. This one is going to be called Lincoln Logs, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm getting this deep voice on Lincoln Logs. So picture the Revenant, except he's what? he's trying to build like a little house in like a forest, but like little wind keeps getting in and like bugs and like little rats and stuff because you know this like the 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 the, the beams he's using are just not perfect, like fitting perfectly. And like he uses clay and like plaster, so it's just not working, right? It's not working. He, his house keeps on getting blown down and like you know, just like destroyed, and it's like a, a gritty survival epic, and then he finds out what if I cut the logs perfectly with like these square little cutouts so that they just fit like perfectly square together. And yeah, that's, that's basically what it's about. And then at the end, he's going to have a cabin where it's like perfectly constructed. I think that actually at that point, it'll go a little, it'll be a little uh, of a uh, satire of itself and it'll be like actual Lincoln logs. We'll just get like life-size Lincoln logs, like, <laughs> with, like the, the plastic roof and everything. And then oh the sun God. comes out, you know, we change the color scheme of the movie and it gets happy. And he and he lives happily ever after. So is it going to be a three-hour a three epic or yeah. is it going to be a tight 90? Yeah, I was about what, to say, it's like the first, 
<laughs> two hours of the movie just like him like trying yep. not like die, almost dying of disease yep. almost getting mauled by yep. a bear because his cabin's not very mm-hmm. well built almost no dialogue zero dialogue <laughs> so fucking funny yeah. <laughs> something about like gritty frontiersman spirit but just like just gotta just gotta figure out how to stack <laughs> logs a little bit more efficiently it's funny because i remember in my place at a lincoln logs i definitely had one white cowboy man and then a, a native american man <laughs> um and i, oh, and I really? wonder yeah i wonder how those would go together in the actual story of that movie like i wonder if like the the native american man will like come through it and try to help him but they don't speak the same language mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. so he tries to kill him mm-hmm. maybe he succeeds maybe he does kill the native american man or some shit like that like he's gone this. crazy at this point yeah because it's been you know it's been months he hasn't seen anybody for months now um he's been fighting oh. for his life so he's like he's a little little weary with the. Uh, with hunger i like that idea when you started going i, I almost saw it going as like a way it's going to turn into like a there will be blood or like uh, that mcdonald's <laughs> movie where it's like he's created this amazing way to build cabins and now he's having he's gonna have issues trying to protect his copyrights <laughs> and his patents for it and all these big businesses are trying to steal his lincoln log ID. <laughs> they've done too many movies of that in succession right now and i don't understand why they all came out at the exact same time <laughs> Because what's going on here? <laughs> we said we had a Tetris movie come out recently. Like, what the fuck is right, that? Right, yeah. Oh my God, there's a Tetris movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> Fucking Lincoln. Lincoln. Like, the whole movie's going to be like really serious. And then the end, the, the, the cabin's just going to be like a life size Lincoln log cabin. Like, the, the roof is going <laughs> to be gonna plastic. It's going to be a plastic roof. <laughs> I cannot amazing. stress enough how the final shot in the movie will be like a very toy looking house. I love that. I would, it should just be a miniature. Just make a, a use an actual Lincoln Log house <laughs> and like superimpose the actor yeah. in the shot. Do some VFX. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Make it look like everybody's yeah. just really, really small. Yeah. Oh my gosh, like old Godzilla movies. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. probably want to see that one first, and then you want to go see uh, the, the Strangest Battle of World War Two. That's my pitch. Th- those are my yeah, pitches. Yeah. I, like I just it. really want that movie to be a subversive expectations movie. So I want the 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 trailer to give away nothing about the fact <laughs> that it has anything to do with Lincoln Logs. I wanted to be yes, so obscure yeah. until the very end, so everyone just goes. What it's just the called fuck? logs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We're that's gonna get like Matt funny. McConaughey, and oh. he's gonna like go method acting and like starve himself for like a few, like a few months and like. <laughs> <laughs> and only play with Lincoln yeah. logs. <laughs> yeah, I used to fuck with some Lincoln and, logs. You know, Lincoln, Lincoln, like Matt McConaughey, a little little cat, little uh, little Easter egg there for the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Gotta get his Lincoln <laughs> logs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the ad revenue is going crazy, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Our studio is going bankrupt. For people that aren't sure, sure. He, he he's in the Lincoln commercials. Right. For people that don't know that. <laughs> also, he's in a movie called The Lincoln Lawyer, I'm pretty sure. I know that. I know that man That's doesn't really drive weird. a fucking Lincoln. Like, that man drives a Maserati or something ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that's good. I really like that. That's good. That's good. That's a good weekend right that's there. A, that's a good weekend. I got my little drinks in, and then I watched a man murder another man in Lincoln Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Mm-hmm. All right. I will go next. I'm not going to lie. Some of mine are uh, cheated a little bit. Uh, That's okay. The cheater. So I'm going to go with my historical, historical slash whatever event slash biopic movie. Only in the sense that when I I thought of this idea, I was like, oh, this is a good idea. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, there's there's somewhat movies about this, but not exactly. So I'm kind of, I'm going ahead with it because I like too much. My movie is going to be about the fucking ferocious rivalry that wasn't entirely a, a rivalry between Tesla and Edison. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> and it is going to be called Tesla v. Edison, Dawn of Light. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking superhero movie. <laughs> Dude, this is a good idea for a movie, actually. Yes. And so, obviously, uh, for people who don't know, uh, Tesla was hired by... Not necessarily Link, uh, Edison himself, but the company, the Edison company, he was about 28 years old, Tesla was, and Edison at that time was 37. And the, one of the biggest, like, somewhat, it's more of a rumor, but not quite confirmed pieces of history is that Tesla was hired to fix uh, a couple problems and it was promised like $50,000 at the time, in which he was never mm-hmm. paid and kind of, they just kind of shrugged off. And that that's sounds, when he sounds quit about right. yeah. and <laughs> started creating his own fucking shit. And that is where the rivalry mm-hmm. begins. But it'll be the whole story of the two of them from so from the, the young Tesla being hired and everything seems all jolly and great to him getting fucked over. And then basically it just turns into the prestige, which if you people who don't know what that movie is, it's about fucking magicians fucking each other over, trying to one up to be the best magician. It's going to be that, but with science. <laughs> <laughs> with science. Early 1900s science. <laughs> yeah. It's obviously... Mike, a lot of biopics, very historically inaccurate. <laughs> this movie is not going to be historically accurate whatsoever in the sense that 
I'm pretty sure uh, Tessa only met Edison like a handful of times. <laughs> but this movie, they're going to be crossing paths left and right. They're going to be sabbing each, other, each other's science experiments all the time on trying to, trying to create shit. They're going to be all up in each other's business. Again, just like the prestige. <laughs> I have casted as my Thomas Edison. This is a callback to last week, Brian. It's Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that would be. Jake Gyllenhaal is a young 37-year-old Thomas Edison. And as my Nikola Tesla at 28, it's got to be Timothy Chalamet. I thought you were going to say Tom Holland. Tesla. I was going to be really it's, upset. It's Timothy Chalamet. You know, I, saw, I, I, I first thought Tom Holland, but I was like, nah, he's not, he's not, he's not Tesla enough. He's not Tesla enough. <laughs> Chalamet, very Tesla. Dude, very just Tesla. Give, got give that both sass of a mustache, him. it would work. Either one of them would work. It yeah. works. Yeah. That's a really fucking funny. Dude, but oh my God. Edison was a fucking dick though. Like, so I would be just make the movie like yeah. make us root for Tesla. Cause like I think that's what most things do anyway. It's like, well, Tesla was really more awesome. He was kind of he was the businessman, and so he kind of sucked, you know? Yeah. Whereas Tesla was more of the the he was the prodigy genius. So obviously, yeah, he got fucked over in the end mostly. Yeah, no, fun fact. <laughs> the reason that LA is in like is like the center of Hollywood is because Edison's company, like he, he just had like a lot of things and he tried to get a lot of patents, right? He had like a lot of inventors working under him. And like one of the, one of the people that created the camera, they started using, was like under him or something. They started yeah. using the camera, like these other companies started using the camera to make movies. And Edison was trying to claim all movies are my property because it's my technology to make them. So they literally, he sued them like right. 200 times before they left. They, <laughs> this was in Boston. And then they literally just, like, they're like, fuck it. We got to go as far away from Edison as we can get. They went to LA, and that is why LA. LA is like to this day That's is so like the home of like funny. they founded Paramount, MGM, and I think Columbia. Right, and I think that was like the big three that started the whole film industry, and that was because of Edison. <laughs> because <laughs> of Edison, crazy. Because of how big of an asshole he was. So. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love yeah. that. And obviously, uh, this movie will be directed by Christopher Nolan. Obviously. obviously, obviously. Which means there will will be a weird time travel element course, in this course, movie course. at some point. I'm thinking. They're, they're going to be experimenting. And then at one point, someone's going to create a time machine and they're going to get, we're going to, I've already, ca I've casted older versions of Edison and Tessa. My old Edison is going to be Anthony Hopkins, mm -hmm. the old Edison. Okay. okay and cool. my old Tesla, Adrian Brody. <laughs> Adrian Brody is my old Tesla. <laughs> uh, I'm not, that, that one's not cooking as well. I, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. I can see it. It works. I can see it kind of works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the hair for it. I don't know how the time travel element <laughs> is resolved in this movie. I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, I'm I'm thinking obviously Tesla's going to be the one to create the time machine of some sort. Yeah, he's he, Tesla's got to be the one to do it cuz he's smarter. Yeah. Yeah. Whether or not he tries to go back in time and like, you know, maybe uh, get one up on a uh, old Edison mm -hmm. in the past. But, uh, you know, it's Christopher Nolan, so he'll definitely interject yeah. some weird time thing in there that doesn't make much the sense. The audience has to get lost at <laughs> least <laughs> once. At, no, at, least, <laughs> at least three times. The audience has to get lost at least three times of what the hell's going on. Yeah. Like, he's going to have to put, like, some weird contraption on his head so you can't hear him through half of the movie when he's talking. That's the other element that has to be in yep. the movie as well. I like that. <laughs> so that's 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 the first one. Tesla v. Edison, Dawn of Light. That movie's going to be three hours <laughs> for sure. That's a three-hour-ass movie. Oh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a long-ass movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. You have to see it in IMAX. Though. Oh, of yeah, course. Yeah, but only it's certain It's going to be shot on film. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nolan wants the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then my toy movie. This is where I also took a cheat because uh, technically these are toys, but there was also a show, so which I, you know, forgot and didn't think about. But, yeah. So my toy movie is going to be Street Sharks. Street Sharks. Street Sharks, yeah. the <laughs> movie. And just based off that, this weekend, the, 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 my, my in-universe weekend is going to be called The Battle of the Brains v. the Bros. <laughs> <laughs> tomato, tomato. What's going Which on? Which movie will you see? <laughs> <laughs> Street Sharks is guaranteed to flop. That is a guaranteed <laughs> flop. Sharks. <laughs> fake ninja turtles that's just a guaranteed flop <laughs> with the street sharks all right look street sharks i'm telling you is going to be the new fast and furious franchise oh, wait man. hear me out hear, hear me, me out. out listen we're the suits right now we're listening to your pitch of whether or not we're gonna <laughs> yeah. invest in this tomfoolery that you got going on here there's only one or should i say two people to direct this movie you got a movie full of bros you gotta have some bros so my directors are the russo brothers Obviously, you need Obvious. bros to direct them. They directed Winter Soldier, Infinity War, Endgame. They know how to handle VFX. They know how to handle a team. 
So there, yeah, we got them as di- in in the directing chairs. All right, now let me let me tell you who the the cast of these characters are. You got four main street sharks. You got Ripster, the great white shark, who is the leader of the street sharks. Mm. Now look, I had someone casted in this at first, but then I read one line in the Wikipedia, and everything changed. Uh. Uh-uh. And that is because this person has to be a leader. They have to be capable. But most importantly, this is a character who loves to create inventions. Who is the greatest inventing actor of our generation? Who's also a bro? That's right. Mark Wahlberg yeah. is my <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Michael Bay. He <laughs> said <like> Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg is the leader of the Street Sharks based solely because he's an inventor. Oh, no. Oh, oh good. Oh, oh no. no. Just so you can say that line again. <laughs> I'm an inventor. I'm an inventor. He wouldn't right. let you forget it in that movie. Oh, despite okay. being the not. dumbest motherfucker. He would, he would not. And then you also have Jab, who is the, uh, the hammerhead shark. He likes to enjoy boxing and has indulged in some mechanics. So this one could go either way, but I'm going to stick with this one. Michael B. Jordan is mm. Jab. He is the hammerhead shark solely because of the boxing elements of it. <laughs> uh, get this man off the, the casting the casting line. What, what is he doing over here? We're already massively <laughs> over budget. Oh, this movie's going to cost so much fucking money. This movie's going to be so expensive. Like 300 mil easily. You have a budget of easily. 30 million and you just use 25 to wait, get Michael B. Jordan. Is it going to be live action with like... The people like the, the actors, like the only the you know, kind of like the new Ninja Turtles, or is it going to be all CGI? No, it's going to be like it's going to be live action, okay? All right, so CGI sharks, yeah, okay, half man, half shark, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to be Michael B. Jordan's actual legs, but then they just CGI his upper <laughs> body to be, I'm yeah, just picture like from the most recent Suicide Squad movie, just four to five of those sharks, yeah, on screen, yeah. At yeah. All actually, times. Well. but they talk more, <laughs> exactly, but talk, but they can talk normal, yeah. yeah. Next, we have is Streaks, who is the ladies' man who enjo- enjoys rollerblading and snowboarding. Oh, man. He's the tiger shark. And obviously, none other. I, I got to go. Chris Evans is <laughs> Streaks, the, the tiger shark. I just thought Human Torch. And I was like, that's, that's the same exact thing. That's the same I character. I see him trying to go more towards his, uh, his role in uh, Scott Pilgrim for this to be more of a just straight douchebag. Like, I, just, I mean, that also, he's very bro He yeah. could be very bro you know, both. so it kind of works. He though. can do both. I'm thinking too much about America's ass, Chris Evans, so I just don't feel him being, like, I don't know, <laughs> funny enough, good enough. So that's why I'm like, I'm going oh. to channel the Scott Pilgrim instead. That's fair. Mm-hmm. No, he's very, he's, he's a good comedic actor. He's good. Yeah. yeah. And then the last one, we got, <laughs> and again, a lot of this movie might be offensive because it's, it's, you know, it's from the 90s. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> we got Big Slamu. Oh. This is oh, man. the strongest and the youngest of the four sharks. He is the whale shark. I went with Jason Momoa, who is not the youngest of these four people, but no. it's fine. It doesn't whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, Jason Momoa makes perfect sense in these movies. He makes. Oh yeah, <laughs> he would 100% absolutely. Do this. And honestly, besides the Mark Wahlberg one, you could alternate the three other ones, and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> they could uh, they could all be the ladies' man. They could all be the boxer. They could all be the youngest and strongest. It doesn't really matter. Right, right, right. That's pretty good. Oh god. So wait, what is the what is the plot going to be? Yeah. So mm. the plot. Funny enough, this goes back to this is actually a sequel to the original series. Whoa. Uh-oh. This is just a continuation uh, of that show. The original show. series sense, that no one remembers. Like. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that works perfectly because the plot of this movie starts out with they are still street sharks, but no one gives a shit. They are forgotten in the world Damn. because of all of the different IPs of superheroes and all this shit. No one cares about these guys at all anymore. And so they're just living their lives with menial ass jobs, just in the dumps. And, uh, and then one day they see on the news that Dr. Paradigm, who is, who is the villain of the of the, of the, of the series. <laughs> you had to look down to, to remember that. Who, who oh, yeah, absolutely. Do- Dr. Who Dr. we Dr. last Dr. saw was uh, in prison. So they finally uh, get him in, in, in jail. And uh, they see in the news that he's escaped. And they're like, oh, no. And then some shit starts to come up. There's some monsters that start stroking the streets uh, out of nowhere. And they realize that it's because of Dr. Paradigm. And he's back and he's creating monsters again. Uh, by the way, Bar- Michael. Uh, Michael. But uh, Dr. Paradigm is going to either be played by Michael Ironside, because if you just Google Dr. Paradigm and Google Michael Ironside, the actor, they look like the same person. <laughs> or Samuel L. Jackson, because he has an eye patch. <laughs> I could definitely see Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, Nick Fury could, could go straight into that without any fuss. 
Yeah, for sure. <laughs> And yeah, and so, yeah, that's the whole plot. It's like Ninja Turtles. They just like big superhero dumb shit, but it's going to be shot so well because it's the Richard Brothers. The CG is going to be on point because we have a million dollars for everything. We're, we're so rich. <laughs> I hope I hope for more than I hope for more than one <laughs> we second. We have more than a million. <laughs> <laughs> we have one million dollars for this movie. <laughs> and then end credits. Credits rolled. They saved the day, whatever. And end credits is just the shot of, of the earth and then pans to the sky so, uh, there's a few meteors a few things that are coming from the sky and what has landed on earth are the dino avengers which were the spin-off <laughs> of the shark sharks the dino <laughs> avengers emerge from the, from their pods that they've arrived on earth and they just say the raptor gang is coming <laughs> and <laughs> also it's the t-rex who is the main leader of the of the Dino Avengers, played by none other than Vin Diesel himself. Oh my God. <laughs> Which is an in-universe cameo because Vin Diesel, one of his earliest acting jobs was he was in a commercial for Street Sharks. Look it up. So that's Fantastic. your Fantastic. There you go. Fantastic. Last fun fact. Uh, the T-Rex, whose name is T-Bone, his special skill is he has what they call the Saurian Stomp which he can just like stomp the ground and shake the earth, which is what Vin Diesel does in Furious 7. So it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because there is a 50-50 chance of this being a box office hit or being the I'm worst thing you, that man. ever show up in theaters. I mean, I really want to like, see you the made. I want to see the yeah, sequel you, you, a lot. That, that lead up really, <laughs> really <laughs> fucked me up. I was like, damn, like, wait a second. Uh, that's really good. I'm telling you, man. But I don't know if there's enough Street Shark fans in the in the world. I don't know <laughs> if there is either. <laughs> I hope you put in only, like, put in so many Easter eggs for people that watch the show. And, like, don't explain <laughs> any of them in the slightest. So that, like, the no. like the point zero 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 one percent of people that, like, would get it would be, like, so happy. And then everybody else be like, what the fuck? Does that mean like it doesn't mean? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what was that? It's like, oh, what it's the from episode that? three of season one of the show. So <laughs> yeah. if, if you watched it, you'd know. It's so yeah. funny because I remember so little of that show. I had the toys and all I remember about the toys, I used to play with them in the bathtub. I used to chew the noses off. And that's why I felt like I could get away with it because I feel like the toys were almost more famous than the actual show. Absolutely. <laughs> that was my, they were definitely, it was a show made for merchandising. It wasn't made for the actual show itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, so that's my weekend of the of the battle of the, the brains versus the bros. I like that's that. That's a solid lot. weekend. That's a solid weekend. A little less damper. You know? Than uh than Devin's, I feel like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we end on a good note. Yeah, <laughs> more in the spirit of what you know what it should be. Right, right, right. right. Oh gosh. So for everyone that doesn't know, I did my homework wrong. <laughs> so. <laughs> or you did your homework right. Who maybe, knows? Or maybe I did my homework right. I'm not a homework sure. But uh, I uh, did it a different way. Instead of having a little Barbie Oppenheimer uh, weekend, I decided to make a Barbieheimer. In that I mixed uh, a toy franchise <laughs> with a historical event to make my own super movie that may or may not be wildly offensive. <laughs> oh, no. This could be great. Oh no! It's gonna be like Team oh, Team boy. America the the sequel. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure this is going to be. <laughs> oh boy! I'm mostly. I think I'm more worried about the historical part. I don't know what you're gonna do. <laughs> As you should be. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! So it's February 18th, 2001. We're at a famous race. We're going down. It's final lap. It's neck and neck. And the next thing we know, we, 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 have, we, we have a hit in the back. A hit in the back causes 18 cars to go and smash back to the fact. One person goes into the wall. A huge crash through the loop. It's Hot Wheels. <laughs> Hot Wheels the movie. But it's also the Daytona 500. This is a movie about the death oh, no. of Dale no. Earnhardt. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! As, as told with Hot Wheels cars, as oh told with Hot Wheels cars, you win, Brian. You win the weekend. Oh my god, it's over. It's over. Oh my. So, it's it's the situation is not funny, but the the ridiculousness of the the audacity to create a movie of this nature, which isn't out of the wheelhouse of what people do in this world. Let's be completely honest. This could actually no, for it. This, this could actually oh get people on the dresser. But as we all know, there was the famous crash in February two thousand one uh, during the Daytona five hundred during the last final lap, um, in which Dale Earnhardt uh, ended up basically in the, the ends of a crash uh like right in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Ken Schrader I believe his name was and then the accident ended up of course him losing his life uh, and that was kind of situation but to have this be instead of just going down you know left turn left turn <laughs> Daytona 500 <laughs> you're on loops you're on a hot wheels loop <laughs> 
this is all in universe. This is all in universe. So this is something that actually exists in what we're going to consider right. the real world. Because I'm having live action. This is a live action movie outside <laughs> oh of this. Because I don't think there's any toys that have come out Woo! of the Hot Wheels cars. They're just cars. You can't put anything inside of them. So I want these people to be beside their Hot Wheels cars. I don't want them to be ridiculous cars. I don't want them to be just the straight, like, you know, remakes of old whatever. <laughs> I want them to be stupid fucking Hot Wheels cars. Yeah. I don't know if you guys ever played those, like, games oh, for fuck. Hot Wheels. I want to be like that. Yeah. You got the jet yeah. boost. Yep. Boom. We're talking full. They all have flames on them. Yeah. All of them. Every mm-hmm. single one. We're talking full Fast and Furious style. In order yes. to be Fast and Furious style, it, we have to get a Fast and Furious director, in which case we're going to be uh, getting Justin Lin. Yeah, uh, from Tokyo Drift and he Fast was Five. nearly the director of Street Sharks. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> really? When you were talking about that, I was like, that feels like you're probably going that route, right? We started there with a lot of the, uh, the actors you were picking, but yeah, we got to get Justin Lin for this. Uh, I have no idea if he's good at any kind of storytelling or anything like that when it comes to getting good writers for that kind of stuff. But he can make the hell out of an epic car car movie. That's true. And he's got it's got to look epic. This has got to look epic. We're making yeah. You know, shout out to the boy upstairs. We we making him look good in this movie. <laughs> We're even going to have a, probably a CGI shot of him at the Ooh. end. Um, riding oh, beside no. Uh, oh, Jared Hart no. Jr. <laughs> We're going to do a deep fake. We're going to do a full Brian deep fake. Brian is taking the role of every actual suit in the production house yes. right now. That's what he's doing. <laughs> I am speed running every single suit in, in the <laughs> space that it is. <laughs> they all need to be fired. Every single one of them. This is an atrocity that is being made. Just have him played by the CG Paul Walker from Furious CG, 7. Fo- not an actual Paul Walker, CG Paul Walker. No, oh I, I, I actually did cast some some people that I did see. Um, it was kind of hard because I don't know all the fucking drivers because I never watched you know, NASCAR. Right. Like no, that. it's fair. Um, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be played by none other than Jason Lee from My Name is Earl. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what? He could use the job. Let's face it. I yeah, had to yeah. find a really... This sounds offensive. I had to find an average looking white man with a mustache. That could like pull off a good just Americano mustache. He had to look mm-hmm. as American man <laughs> as possible. And my name is Earl. Showed that Jason Lee can do it. He, you he know that works. He can that pull works. off. He can gain maybe a tiny bit of weight. And I think that he could really play that role of just being a country man, doing country man things. And I'm into it. We also, of course, have <laughs> <laughs> Michael Helton, which uh, was the one that actually had to end up announcing it. Uh, he was the announcer at the Daytona 500 at the time Ooh. that this happened. Um, he's going to be played by. Wayne Knight from Seinfeld. Oh wow! Uh, okay. If you see what that you man what? looks That's like, good. if you see what that man looks like, yeah, uh huh, yep. There with it. We're here for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> I want to once again remind you: this is not this is this is a, a Hot Wheels track that we're talking yeah. about. It's like right. Ben is yeah. over a Hot Wheels track. It's yeah. bright orange. The cars are flying <laughs> through so, certain obstacles, like. And this movie, this movie is not going to be a Woo. tight ninety. This movie is going to be two hours twenty at least. <laughs> um, we're we're really milking it, we're really milking. It. We're gonna go through some lifestyle changes and stuff. We're gonna go through some other races beforehand. We're gonna we're gonna go through Dale's life. We want to know a lot about him as a person. Mm-hmm. Uh, There's definitely gonna be a conversation moment. where someone approaches him and is like, "This is a risk you shouldn't be taking." Blah blah. You know, oh, yeah, I can 100%. see it in the trailer now. You know, we're gonna say based on true story, but we're definitely gonna be adding our own uh, <laughs> additions to it. <laughs> I don't know if Dale earned how to, how, to, how to wife. I assume he did. Mm-hmm. We're axing the wife. Yeah. Instead, we're getting yeah. another just pretty woman to stand at a bar and tell him that he's going. He's doing crazy stuff. Like, you know, you oh. know, you need to put up the towel there, Earl. It's been it's been too long. I, I, it's about time that you give it up. And he's gonna be like, one last ride. Yeah, oh, no. they used to have the track just all on the ground, but now it's now oh. it's got all these loops and stuff, and it's just it, it racing it what it used to be. It's a young man's game. It's a young now. man's game, but I gotta show him. I gotta show him what's going on. Whole time she's w- wiping down the bar, even though there's no customer, no nothing spilled. She's wiping down the bar, wearing a sleeveless shirt. Uh, looking a little rugged. She she right. a, a man cat calls her and she gets mad at him for no reason. We're all tropes, full tropes. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're, we're yeah, going yeah, we're yeah. going full tropey with this one. Woo! Boom. I'm into it. I'm into it. Can we have like can oh we have like God. all Hot Wheels cars, but just one regular NASCAR car somewhere in there? Just like one, <laughs> one regular. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we, we gotta add it into it. at least some kind yeah. of like a cameo or something. The very last car at the very end, just a normal yeah. ass car. It doesn't even make it through the loop. <laughs> it just fucking falls immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, uh, shit, we told number 67 that it won't go through without the boosters, no. but he said he didn't want them. He said uh, it was a young man's game, funny. and he didn't want to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And then last but not least, uh, I didn't want Ken Schrader, because he was a pretty big part about it. He's the one that actually discovered uh, what had happened and didn't want to say what had happened. We're picking Vince Vaughn, because uh-huh. Vince Vaughn is... He looks like he could be racist in another life. Yeah, uh, that works. Yeah, <laughs> that works. not to say Ken Trader's racist, but I do know NASCAR no. and I do know what it looks like. These these look like some good old boys. Have you ever seen them? Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow, that 
is nowhere near where you were going to go. <laughs> this, the moment you said the date, I was like, Whoa, Oh, you thought I was going to go a different place? Well, I was just like, I was trying to think. I was like, what date? What's the significance of that yeah. date? I started to Google. I was like, what is that date? There's only one other <laughs> big date in 2001 that anybody talks about. Yeah. So I did want to I did want to rifle off a couple of my other uh, ideas that I had as yes, well. Just because I feel like since I went a completely different way that everyone else did, it makes it that much funnier that I chose to <laughs> yeah. do this because I really fucked up. And none of these are okay. One is better. So I chose Nerf as my my, my toy. Uh, and then uh-oh. I also no. chose the Gulf War. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's that one. And then I also picked the uh, American Girl Dolls and uh, Britney Spears' iconic <laughs> 2007 breakdown. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, I think oh the God. Barbie movie is going to be kind of something like I that. I love so, how... Yeah. <laughs> I love how me and Devin went like real old. Oh, and Brian, Brian, like capped in the '90s slash early 2000s. <laughs> I know that was where he was. The only history I care about, baby, <laughs> pop culture history. Yeah, that's that is what I hey, mean. It counts. Holy that shit. counts. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Oh gosh, y'all shouldn't have let me cook. That was it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We should have just let Brian pitch all of those for this second <laughs> to see how wild it could get. <laughs> My God, Brian, that was good. Fucking hell. Obviously, uh, yeah, these are jokes, listeners. Yes, we yes, do. Please. Brian was Brian was playing a bad suit that would uh, this movie should never be made. But you know what, Brian said, <laughs> like he said, someone would make this movie. Yes. <laughs> someone would. And please don't let it be you, viewers, listeners. People. Yeah, suits. Be smarter than yeah. that. <laughs> Just make another Fast and Furious. It'll make you more money. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I'll pitch Robert Smalls next time to. Uh... To give us some some yes. a palate cleanser to that Korean <laughs> thing we just. I was experienced. really trying to find a good one for GI Joe, but I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with GI Joe's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's Man, a tough one. GI Joe's. But so, yeah, you can't go actual war because that's dumb. That's just a war movie. I'm like, yeah, that's just a lesser. Yeah. That's just less than actual GI Joe. I think the existing GI Joe movies are basically exactly what they should be. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. That's true. You can't really do much that's very, much yeah. different with it. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of fun, guys. That was great. Great idea, Devin. Uh, great execution, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listeners, go see Oppenheimer and Barbie. Have a good weekend. Have a good time. Yeah, when I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'll see Oppenheimer. I don't know if I have the, the mental fortitude for three hours or whatever <laughs> yeah, the fuck that I is. I am definitely going to see Barbie. I'm yes. definitely going to see Barbie. Guys, it, it, we might talk about it if we all see Barbie. Not going to lie. Oh, I'm, I'm saying it. I already got it, it all set up. There you go. Already ready. I have heard, though, that you do need to see Oppenheimer and IMAX. Yeah, and I yeah. don't want to do that. Christopher Nolan says about all of his movies, though. <laughs> yeah. you know? That's for every single movie. See it in IMAX. See, yeah, you know. I, his own ass. I'm really curious how he's going to show on screen the splitting of an atom with no CGI. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm telling you, he set off a nuke. He did it. He <laughs> really set off a really? nuke. I'm get a camera in there to see it. <laughs> <laughs> did it did they made the world's smallest camera to go see <laughs> the splitting of an atom. I don't know, but it's going to be awesome, whatever he does do. Like He said the explosion is oh, going to leave you feeling things. I don't know if it's going to make you come or what, but it's going to... Right? <laughs> yeah. What? I don't know. I don't think people are going to oh, clap boy. at the end of this movie. This movie's going to be weird. It's going to be good. I can't wait to see what weird time travel element he has in this one. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, gosh. Can y'all just watch it and then describe it to me poorly? That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, guys, listeners, we hope you had a lot of fun with that. That is our main topic. Guys, should we now quickly move into our final segment of the week? Yes. Let's do it. Which... We like to call free for all title pending. This is the segment of the listeners where we can kind of do whatever we want. We can talk about our life, talk about our day, rant, recommend something, take a nap. It's free for all. This week, Devin is full of the ideas. He has come with us <laughs> with another one where, depending on how long this is, this might be our free for all for the week. Because Devin has, I think he's about to go on a bit of a rant. So, uh, a bit of a, Devin, a bit of a, a chip on my shoulder. Okay. What what has happened? Who hurt you this week? <laughs> uh, Netflix. <laughs> No, <laughs> I feel like they probably hurt people every week. Let's They've hurt a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm just so tired. My, we started watching Witcher season three. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. No, we're in the second episode right now, and I'm just like mad. You're only in the second. Wait, this whole prompt was off of one episode of no, no, Witcher the season second. three. We made it to we made it to two, but I sit there <laughs> with like a raised blood pressure because it's just everything is so against i've read the books and i have played the games okay i've read the books and played the games before the show came out so don't come at me okay i know what i'm talking about (laughs) they just took the ip and then they just tell their own story like 
I don't understand why people keep doing this. Halo did it. Lord of the Rings did this, okay? Now Witcher. It's like the same shit three times in a row. You make it mid as fuck. Like, you make it fit this modern formula structure where it's like you got to have three subplots. You got to have three, like, narratives going on at one time. Then they're going to combine at some point, right? Every show is designed like this now. Like, it's all the same. And it's all mid as shit. Like, it's just boring. (laughs) It's all the same. You take what's unique and good about the IP that you set out to make. And then you erase it. And then you just make it like everything else with a different skin on it. This is no different from, like, Wink Saga or the... The other one where they're doing like like you know boats through like darkness and shit. Uh, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> That's not like the most generic shit. Ever. I know. What is exactly, boats through Oscar, darkness? Exactly. Wait, what is boats through darkness? Also what? on Netflix, which looks real shitty. And oh God, I gotta I gotta yes. insult it properly. I gotta know its name. But anyway, I'm just <laughs> frustrated. It's like why do they do this over and over and over and over again? We we know what's coming. Like they do it to get a broad audience, a broad audience, right? We got to dumb it down to make it a broad audience. But then it's like you take away what was special about what you make the story you're trying to tell. All right. You know why right. Lord of the Rings is iconic? Is because they resisted all of these pressures that all of these shows just willingly don't. Like they all just succumb to all the pressures yeah. of the industry to just make it like unoriginal <laughs> as fuck. Then they're shocked when they get bad reviews and stuff. And then the whole time they alienate whatever fans that came from the original content, like me, who came to watch it and, and enjoy this. You alienate them because you tell such you do such a bad job of telling the story. You betray so many characters who would do things that they would never do. <laughs> it, it, I'm just I'm just done, man. I'm frustrated. Like, <laughs> so, he's I so mean, tired. I, Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> that was real. That was real. That just was so it blows tired. my mind of like why you would set out to make a story to tell like, hey, we want to tell this story that exists already. And literally oh, all we have to do is just read these pages in front of us and put that on a screen, but okay, instead, look. we want to just tell a different story and take everything, like, this character would never do this. Hey, you know what? Let's have them do that in the show. Makes no sense. I hate it. I hate it. I'm done with it. We need to have a cast of people in Hollywood that are just adapters, not writers, okay? I don't need to know how clever you are and how good of a story you can tell because you can't tell one because you just keep making it fit the same structure. I don't need Devin, that. Devin, this is, this is out of tone. The writers are on strike because they're not getting paid. Don't shit on the writers right now. Okay. But <laughs> we, we people in Hollywood that just say, I am an adapter. All I do is take a book and try to tell it exactly the way it is on screen. That's exact, That's what we need. We need more of that in so Hollywood. So you, you make an interesting argument there. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of, there's a difference between a tattooer and a tattoo artist. A tattooer can definitely just give them something to tattoo and they'll just do it. Where the tattoo artist right. actually, you know, can draw and make and create mm-hmm. and actually do things that actually make that work. We can argue that uh, the people that, you know, wrote and, and made uh, Game of Thrones were better adapters than they yes. ever were writers. Yes. They were better tattooers yes. than they were tattoo artists. Yes. Because once they right. actually Perfect got their, example. Their own, Perfect. their own vision to be able to do things they wanted to do, we yeah. saw how it actually kind of played out. And, yeah, of course, they still had, like, George R. R. Martin talking to him about what happened. But when they actually had, like, nothing hard and poppy mm-hmm. to, like, go off of. They struggled. Right. They floundered a little bit. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, we, we see it all the time when they talk about how, like, yeah, they told us not to read any of the source material before we made this show. Why? Yes. Why would you do that? Why? What, that's complete oh, right. antithesis Why? of what you want when it comes to those things. I mean, Halo's going to always be talked about when we talk about this, because Halo is a fundamentally awful show because they decided oh. to take something that actually, it's really funny because Halo has such an enriching lore and such an enrich, enriching story, and they just completely dumbed it down to just military propaganda bullshit. And also a love story. Right. And that was really just in such poor faith that I can't believe they yes. thought that'd be a good idea. Right. Because hey, there's a ton of Halo fans. Like got people that really, really, really love Halo. But instead, you tried to hit too many masses and made the most mid sci-fi movie TV show you ever right. could create. And when you dumb it down for the masses, you make it like everything else. It's uh, it's just not special. It just blends and in And even the masses else. don't want it. Like, the masses want something different as well. The reason that Game of Thrones did so well in the beginning is because Game of Thrones was so different from anything we saw before. Right. That it's six Halo with you. wasn't different from anything that we saw before. But that's because the books were special. Right. And that's and they and they were faithful to it. Yeah. Look, I'll tell okay, look, I, I you got we've had we've had this kind of know, art, know, like discussion before in many different things. And I will still stand by I agree pretty much with what you're saying, but I will also say there are definite there are definite exceptions to that rule because the boys, for example, most people and things I've read up mm-hmm. on it will agree that show is way better than the actual comic sure. book store. Sure, and sure, so sure. 
if they had adapted the exact story, you might not have gotten as good of a show as the boys that we all really so, like. I mean, we all know the difference. There's a difference between artistic integrity and just being lazy. Um, and it's obvious. Oh, yeah, it's that's obvious. why. Yeah, yeah. Um, we see it in a lot, a lot of the movies we've been seeing recently and how bad they've been because it's a much, it's much easier to just buy a script and then just copy control F and change every name to a different name. Um, which right. is probably what happened to the original Sonic the Hedgehog movie, uh, talking about things that probably it was fortunate <laughs> that it was fun enough that people enjoyed it. But that was a movie that was just a it pretty generic. It comes back to I mean, Sonic. But, but, I mean, I, I could be <laughs> yeah, critical yeah, yeah. of it. I love it. So I'm, I'm critical of it because I can tell when they're just like, okay, you took a script that was like, you know, Hero mm-hmm. A does this and this and this and this. And they were like, change that to Sonic. And that was a movie. <laughs> right. That was a whole movie. Like, <laughs> that's an entire movie. They did that with... Um, yeah, uh, the Cloverfield Paradox movie. You can definitely tell that oh, that, yeah, was that was a not generic a Cloverfield movie. Yeah, that was a generic <laughs> script that they took back, uh, changed some of the names in it, and then also filmed a little section on Earth, and that was what they did. Yeah, it's so obvious. Yeah, and those are the things. It's like, yeah, you can you can find something and try to make it better, and we have seen that before. Like you said, the boys, and I'm sure there's mm-hmm. other examples I just can't think of right now. But we just don't. They don't want to do that because that actually takes. Work, I mean, like I, I'll, I'll say another example is like a lot of MCU stuff. Yeah, sure. Civil War the movie is not Civil War that well, comic yeah, storyline. That's right. true. That's true. Like at all, and most people would say that is a phenomenal Infinity in the Infinity War. I was about to say is that. not actual Infinity War. Same. Infinity Gauntlet sucks. That comic run it's, is terrible. You know, and so <laughs> it's like sometimes there are good changes, and again, I think it's a thing where a lot of times they're not great. Like I agree with you. Like Witcher season three, me I talked about it last week for my free fall with Brian was. I again, I still feel like it's just one seasons one, two, and three are all pretty much the same ish for me. They're all kind of lukewarm, fine. But I think it's a thing because this isn't really a spoiler for the books, really, in the sense that there are good chunks of books where certain characters are just not there. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, honestly, like, it sucks, but people would not watch a show if Henry Cavill was in two out of these five episodes. Right. They just, they, they just wouldn't go watch it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's the reason why there's the changes that I know, because I've read the books as well. So I know the changes that you're talking about in the sense that, yeah, they need to find a way to put him in every episode, which I like, I would be fine if he wasn't in them. But I also know that not a, not as many people would watch that show then. It's the same thing with Blade Runner, the movie that Blade Runner 2049 or whatever it's called, <laughs> that I think is fantastic. And it's a, it's a, it's a hard like sci fi movie that makes you think about shit and it's really fucking good. No one fucking saw it. <laughs> that's why they didn't make a sequel because right, right. nobody fucking saw it and it made no money. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, and that's at the heart of it. It's like the industry kind of like the demands of the industry yeah. kind of ruined some things. But you see it more prevalent. Like I think it's honestly like if HBO had done Witcher, I think it would have been the next Game of Thrones, and it should have been the next Game Probably. of Thrones. Probably it could. It has all yeah. the complexity there to make it the next Game of Thrones. But Netflix yeah. just. Lower value. I think it's simply. mostly a Netflix problem. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> for maybe, sure. Maybe my gripe is just with Netflix. <laughs> and it, it's tough. You say it's the demand of the industries, but it's not really the demand of the industries. It's the demand of what the suits thinks is the right, demand of the industry. Right, right, right. Um, Of the audience. And yeah, you yeah, also yeah. have to think about time period it takes to make things as well. Um, I think that's why we're getting like an influx of so many shitty games that are like games of the live service kind of thing. It's what people think you want, but it's what people think that you wanted in 2017 because that's how long it takes to make these things. Like right, and you have to right. get casting for the movie, you have to or TV show, you have to get the people there, you have to film and stuff like that. That can take multiple years. So you mm-hmm. might be thinking you're hitting fire right then, and it could have been fire right then, but the fact that you have to wait before I actually make it, now it's not anyone's appetite anymore. Like The Witcher might have went off yeah. if it first came out, maybe like five years earlier than it did yeah because it would have been something that's like okay shit like we got a little bit of a production value going on here but mm-hmm. then like witcher 3 had been out for a long time at the time this came out it still probably did well i'm sure but like i don't know that it met the same audience that it might have would have when it like i guess if you had saw something that came out during like when spider-man came out during the spider-man video game at the same time you know shit like that yeah yeah honestly it coming out in five years probably would have given a bigger audience because when it first came out I think even then, people were already on the fence with Netflix. Right, yeah. If it came out at the peak of Netflix and people didn't realize that Netflix just will shut down a show after one season and then, like, and it's just, like, all the issues with it, I think it might have done better yeah. even if it was just as, if it, if it came out the exact same way. Mm-hmm. But if it just came out years earlier, we just don't have much faith in Netflix anymore. Because <laughs> they will cancel the show. It's just frustrating because, yeah. like, you know, the Harry Potter movies, like, you know what, like, if you've read the book, you know what's going to happen in this movie. And it follows largely, and I would say they did a pretty great job adapting for the most part, except yeah. for the last two movies. Like, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> you know what's going to happen. And, and they improved the story of the book in some ways. Like, 
Lord of the Rings is iconic. And like when you but when you look right. at when Peter Jackson was pitching it to people, he resisted so much pressure to like make it like dumb it down, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. And there's so many forgettable, expendable movies that come from good books or good ideas that just get forgotten because they're done poorly. And I think that's my my issue is like I've read these books and I'm like, this this is not what happened in the books. Like Right. I don't understand why you have you feel the need to tell your own story. And I, I mean, yeah, I get that. You got to have Henry Cavill in every episode, right? Like, sure, whatever. But like, just tell the same story. <laughs> tell the same story. Tell the same story with no, the yeah. same characters. Don't tell the story with like half of this character and make this character way different. Like, I just it, bl- it kills me. It makes me so well, mad. Yeah. Isn't that half the reason why Henry Cavill wasn't coming back? Didn't he say that he was I having a lot so. of issues I think talking so. back to them about yeah. what was happening? Yeah, and now he's going to go to Warhammer and like you know he's do the Warhammer project and hopefully stay faithful to that. But like, yeah, I mean, but that I doubt it. I, the reason I doubt that one is purely on budget. Yeah, yeah. There's no way yeah. that show's going to look good. That's true. Oh, no. It's not. Po- it's not possible. You think so? And plus, Amazon. We've. I mean, we've seen Amazon has a lot of resources with the new Lord of the Rings one, but they that didn't help the quality of the story. I mean, uh, I hate yeah, it. I don't know. I think it, <laughs> I hated that show. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, it's like this modern structure for shows, right? They all have to follow the same structure. You got to have like a season long mystery that resolves by the end of the season, right? Like Game of Thrones right. was just like following the books, and it's like, yeah, a lot of the stuff is not going to resolve until like it, you know, the books are done, like until the the season, the series is over, and that's fine because it's iconic. It keeps people invested. We keep coming back for other seasons because it's like this is one big story. And uh, I just, The Witcher is just so bad. And like, I mean, that shows you exactly where their heart is too, that they're casting Liam Hemsworth. I mean, maybe Chris Hemsworth. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Chris is still worth too much. There's no way they can Chris. But like Liam uh, Hemsworth? Yeah. I mean, come on, bro. Like, That's that is what, terrible. It, it, yeah. I hear he's working out and he's trying to he's trying to do better, but I don't think. It's- <laughs> I mean, he's a Hemsworth, so he's already freakishly big anyways, right. you know? <laughs> like, it's just not, man, it ain't it, man. He ain't it. No, maybe in ten to fifteen years we'll get another a- adaptation of it. I would. It's gonna. It, I think. Uh, I think that that series will stay relevant, especially if, uh, if CD Projekt Red still makes more games or like the remake of one and stuff like that. They'll come across it again. Yeah. It'll be one in in the zeitgeist. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna die. It's gonna get uh, maybe a half season of Liam Hemsworth, and it's gonna do like the idol did on HBO Max and just fizzle. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna and, crash. And, yeah. yeah, and like the and that'll the, be the end of that show. The story will be unfinished. Yeah, which is that's I think that's the most disappointing part. But as much as you complain, would you want them to complete this mediocre <laughs> story? In your opinion. <laughs> You know, that when, is a when good you put point. it like that, I guess we better just, <laughs> just end my suffering as early as you can, I guess. Yeah. Hey, I watch a lot of Showtime shows. I'm used to shit being canceled. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll always have the games. Like Oscar always says, I'll always have the books. I'll always have the games. They're always there. They're, They're always, always there. As you. much as we both want a good adaptation of that, like, they're still there. True. But it is a bummer. It's a bummer. And again, I think, like, it, it almost might be more of a conversation about Netflix than it is about. These well, yeah, shows, I mean, I guess because, you know? like, depending on the <laughs> like, you know, HBO would do it well. I think you know, there's a few that would do it right, right? But like Paramount, I don't trust them anymore. I was about to say it's a it's a mix of both. I think we just have an oversaturation of streaming services to the point where a lot of just bullshits being thrown at the wall. Period. Because it's mm-hmm. oversaturated. I also think it depends on what like the genre. Like fantasy is hard to make yeah. because of money. Budget, yeah. Because you have to build a world. And so like Netflix can make all these good shows like like you and shit like people like right. quote unquote good, whatever. You know, people like that show, but you know. But like because it's it's in you don't gotta build shit, you know? Right. You, all you need is people, people in the town, and you can you can make exactly. This show. So I think it's tough to do that. Mm-hmm. For sure. I definitely agree with you. Yeah, Halo is in a weird space right now because actually in game yeah. they just randomly gave you the charms for uh, three of the characters from the Halo TV show. So now people are speculating that they're going to start uh, without warning. No, just no one even now? Did, just now, just now they threw them in. There was no, there was no work between the game and the actual TV show at any point. They didn't even tell you that it came out. Didn't tell you there was no like you know special event that happened when it came out. Nothing. Right. But they just randomly gave it to us like two days ago. Um, so now people think they're going to start showing stuff about season two, and everyone is not excited. <laughs> was gonna be that show fucking sucked it was terrible yeah i watched i saw somebody there was a quote tweet that i saw because someone was like does this mean we're gonna get information about season two and someone quote tweeted just like i hope not <laughs> <laughs> yeah man I don't know. it just it just blows my mind because if you have something that has a big fan base you would think that if i just tell this story in the same way but bring it to a broader audience with my platform that people will like it as it is but when you have to change all the shit 
then you just piss off the, the original fans. And then everybody else is just kind of like, yeah, whatever. It's another show. It's just like. We now have Last dumb. of Us. And Last of Us did amazing. So yes. now there's no, yes. there's no reason to not keep doing that. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Right. I'd be less disappointed if there weren't such stellar examples out there. Mainly done by right. HBO, yeah. I guess. So. <laughs> I know, yeah. That's I mean, the key. They got the, the money. HBO. You got the money. <laughs> and, that, and that's the shittiest thing is that we, it always goes back to the conversation between art and money. That's what it always comes uh, to. Sadly, you need, sometimes you do need a lot of money to make it work. Uh, <laughs> money ruins everything, bro. Money ruins creativity. It sucks. It sucks. It's rough. Yeah. That was fun. Sorry, Thank you for sorry, that, guys. Devin. Sorry. No, no, no. That was good. I love talking about that kind of stuff because it's, it's true and real. It's true. It's true. That will do it for our free-for-all and for our show listeners. We hope you enjoyed it. You can email us at thefortressof at gmail.com. Fortress spelled F-O-U-R. Feel free to email us any questions, feedback, recommendations, or anything like that. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and the YouTube channel at the Fortress of. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your grandma, tell your cats. Follow the three R's like a beautiful Bollywood movie. <laughs> Rate, review, and recommend us to anyone and everyone you know. Thank you, Jackie, for helping edit the podcast every week. Thank you, Brian, for the art. Alex, for the music. And Devin, thank you for being here even when you're not here. You can find Brian on Instagram at ITZ underscore, by the way. Alex at Peterson Films. And Devin, you can find him. Oh, taking Still a deep mad. breath somewhere. <laughs> yes. Find him not watching The Witcher, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'll finish it. We'll see. The rough. Yeah, I, I was never going to get into it. <laughs> uh, next week, listeners, I don't know. We'll find out. Some, 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 something's happening. I don't know. But we'll see. It'll be, it'll be fun. We'll, re- we'll review the, <laughs> I don't know. The, the real experience of Oppenheimer and Barbie in one day. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's our show, listeners. And don't forget, happy holidays, everyone. And put a coat on. It's cold out there. It was really rainy and stormy today. The weather's been so weird. It's been (laughs) raining and sunny at the same day, like, for the past three days. It's so nuts. Weird shit. All right, we'll see you here next week, listeners, in another episode in the Fortress of... (laughs) 